Hey everyone, it's Abby. I've been wanting to make a Husif or housewife sewing kit for a long time. I've been using a zippered pouch for my travel sewing kit for a while. But this will be a nice way to enclose my sewing kit in a pretty way while having everything a little easier to find. I wanted to incorporate some of my favorite silks that I've gotten over the years, as well as some leftover green leather that I have. We went on a trip to the UK to see my brother and see a few things recently. I got all the parts together beforehand for this and then hand sewed the sewing kit in the hotel. So let's get sewing! Using some new gridded pattern paper I got as a gift, I laid out the things I wanted to put into the sewing kit to kind of figure out how wide I want and long I want to make it. I looked up a couple tutorials and Pinterest images to figure out how big to make it. I'm making it 6 inches wide and I'm adding 4 sections plus a top flap piece. Each section will be 4 inches tall, so about 16 inches, plus a bit extra for the top flap. I created an angled top flap part with about one inch in height meeting in the middle. I made a pattern piece for my pockets as well, six inches by four inches. I cut out my pattern piece. I drew out a pattern piece that would be the right size for a scissors pocket and cut that out. I have these green lambskin leather scraps from a previous project that is just enough for the outside of my sewing kit. I will have to piece this together, but that's part of the charm. I thought I had filmed cutting out the pocket pieces, but it seems like I didn't. So I cut two large pockets with seam allowance out of the main pocket pattern. I then cut out one half size pocket with seam allowance, then the scissors pocket with seam allowance, and I cut a small square for a built-in pincushion. I pieced the leather and glued the seams before heading off on the trip. I really didn't want to do that in the hotel. After I cut all that out, I decided I needed to have something heavier under the silk. So I found the raw pink silk I used for my Edwardian corset and cut under pieces for all the pockets and things. I pressed all my pieces using the terrible hotel iron, but it worked well enough. You can see that I'm using the pink shot silk for my 1890s corset. The green and pink striped silk that I need to make something from still. The green shot silk that I'll be using for my 1890s ball gown. The light green silk that I'll be using to make a Regency bodice from. And this embroidered light green that I'm using for the lining will be made into a Regency open robe for a fancy ball gown. I cut a long piece of the light green poly silk to be the binding. I'm pressing a quarter inch seam into the length of it. I laid the long pattern piece over the top of my leather and marked where I needed to remove a little from the edges.
I trimmed that bit off. I'm pinning all my silk pieces to my slightly larger raw silk pieces to baste them together. I cut out my scissors pocket piece with tiny seam allowance out of the green shot silk. Then I cut out a piece of the raw silk and pinned them together. It's time to figure out the embroidery. I realized I needed to embroider the silk first and then attach it to the raw silk. I hand embroidered flowers onto the scissors pocket and then hand basted it to the raw silk. I embroidered flower and swirl outlines onto the small half pocket and hand basted that to the raw silk. I added flower and swirls only to the top of my pink silk pocket as I will have a few things overlaying the bottom part of this pocket. You can see I added a large flower to my pincushion and based it in a rounded shape. These are all the pieces so far. I wanted some more intricate flowers on my light green pocket. I embroidered a couple of lilies of the valley and then added some larger poppies to fill the rest of the space. We relocated to a different hotel room. It had much better space and an iron that actually had steam. So I repressed my pockets to make them a little flatter. I trimmed the raw silk from around the edges. I pressed a quarter inch seam allowance into the top of each pocket, then pressed the bottom up as well. Here's how my pockets and pieces are going to line up on the lining piece. A large pink pocket at the bottom, the pin cushion and scissors pocket next up, then the large light green pocket, and finally the half pocket at the top. I turned under the raw edges on the top of all the pockets and hand whip stitched that in place with matching silk thread. I pinned each of the pieces where they will sit on the lining. I hand stitched down the sides with matching thread and a running back stitch.
I then whip stitch along the bottom of each pocket. I realized I would have raw edges on the inside, so I turned the pockets out and turned under the raw edges to the inside and hand whip stitched it to the lining. I pinned the scissors pocket in place at an angle with raw edges turned under. I whip stitched that with matching thread. I turned under the sides of the pincushion a bit at a time all around the edge, pinning as I went. and I pinned that to my lining. I hand whip stitched all around the edge of the pincushion with matching thread. Using polyfill, I stuffed the pincushion as much as it would take. I re-situated the pins and seam ripped a little of the one side to then move it in a little so that there is a lot less bubble on the lining layer. I wanted the cushion on the outside. I then hand whip stitched the rest of the way. I closed off the edge with a long stitch to keep the polyfill inside. I bought sample pieces of expensive wool from Mood Fabrics to create my needle holders at the bottom of my sewing kit. These will be great to hold my hand sewing needles. Using a blanket embroidery edge stitch and matching silk thread, I closed off the edges of my wool fabric. I 
I pinned those wool pieces on top of each other to the bottom and hand basted those in place. I need to add a ribbon for keeping the scissors in place. I pin a length of pink ribbon to the right place and hand stitch that right down the middle. I tie the ribbon through the top of the scissors and that keeps them from falling out. Using 8th inch elastic, I create loops to keep my measuring tape together. I create loops for the other pieces that I want to attach below the half pocket. I hand sew them to the lining layer. It's time to attach the lining to the leather outer layer. I lay the lining over the top of the leather, lining it up. Using my sewing clips, I clip along the edges to keep the layers together. I flip the whole thing over and start attaching my binding to the edges using the clips and starting at the top. Using a hand leather needle and doubled waxed matching thread, I hand double backstitched the binding to both layers of the leather and the lining. I flip the binding over the edge to encase the whole thing and clip that in place. I hand whip stitch that binding in place on the inside. Here, 
produce the final project back home. I placed pins in the pincushion at an angle. There are hand sewing needles in both layers of the wool. You can see all the spaces and pockets to put things. It's great! I made this half pocket specifically for my tape measure. I created these elastic loops to hold my seam ripper and my fancy needle holder. My thimble, wax, and a needle threader go in the center pocket. My scissors fit nicely in the scissors pocket and tie in place. I tuck the ends into the pocket with them to keep them out of the way. And finally, I can place any thread or embroidery thread I'm using in the bottom pocket. I roll up the whole thing and tie it using the ribbon I attached at the very top of the sewing kit. It all fits rather neatly together, and I can unroll it and find all my sewing items very easily. Thank you for joining me today as I made a Husif or Housewife sewing kit. I made it using leather and silk scraps that I had, plus adding embroidery to the pockets and pieces that go inside. I love how useful and pretty this is. I'll be using it a lot for sewing in the future. I found it to be quite useful to have a hand sewing project to work on during downtime on our trip to the UK. I'll probably do this more often. If you liked this video and want to see more sewing and costume videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing!